each week is definitely a new week. And I think that has kept me going in my clinical role, having those interests outside of what I traditionally do. Welcome to Doc Working, the Whole Physician Podcast. I'm Dr. Jen Barna, founder and CEO of Doc Working and co-host of the podcast. And I just want to take a moment to thank you for joining us here. If you're listening or watching us on YouTube, we really appreciate you being here. We appreciate your feedback. Please like and subscribe, and please let us know what you'd like to hear more of. I'm excited to have with me here today, Dr. Kevin Poe. Kevin is the owner, founder, and editor of KevinMD.com. And with over 3 million page views per month, Kevin has been called social media's leading physician voice. He is a practicing board-certified internal medicine physician, a national media commentator, co-author of the book, Establishing, Managing, and Protecting Your Online Reputation, a social media guide for physicians and medical practices. Welcome to Doc Working, the Whole Physician podcast, Dr. Kevin Poe. Well, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. I'm so interested in hearing about your experience. First of all, just how is your week going so far? <laughs> My week's going great. I am an internal medicine primary care doctor. I practice primary care two and a half days a week and Thursdays and Fridays. I do a podcast like you where I interview guests on Kevin MD. So it's a fantastic blend of doing what I was traditionally trained in with something completely new. Yeah. So as a practicing physician, podcast host, keynote speaker, author, all these different facets of your work at this point, how does a typical week unfold for you? Well, the typical week isn't necessarily planned. And I think that I actually like it that way because I think if physicians, and I'm sure that you talk to a lot of doctors who just do one thing, whether it's seeing patients or doing procedures or going to the hospital. I think that is a journey to burnout because I talk to a lot of physicians myself on my own podcast and on Kevin MD, and the physician burnout rate is approaching 50%, and that was before the pandemic. And one of the things that I've heard from these doctors is that we need to be more than our degrees, and we need to have interests outside of medicine because having only that interest in medicine is going to perpetuate that path to burnout. So for what I do, I love primary care. I love what I do. I love making that difference in patients' lives and moving that needle. But I think that if I were to do that full time, five days a week and 60, 70, 80 hours a week, I don't know how much longer I would be able to do that. So I cut down to part time. And like you said, I have other activities like the podcast, like editing Kevin MD. And before the pandemic, I would do more speaking and hopefully that's going to ramp back up now that live events are starting to happen. But each week is definitely a new week. And I think that has kept me going in my clinical role, having those interests outside of what I traditionally do. What was the evolution of KevinMD.com? I know you started that a while ago. You were one of the first physicians really in the social media space. How has that evolved from what you were doing at the beginning to what it has become? Well, I like to say that I had a grand plan from the very beginning, but I'd be lying if I said that. So I started Kevin MD back, let me just look here, 2004. And at that time, blogs were just in its infancy. And I just really followed the trends of social media. So you had blogs and then you had other platforms, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and you just follow trends in other industries. One of the things I say is that if you follow trends in other industries, in a few years, healthcare is going to catch up to that industry. So I looked at how other industries would use social media and use platforms to get their voice across. And I thought that, hey, we as physicians, we also need to get our voices heard because a lot of the decisions that are being made on our behalf, they're being made by those not necessarily involved with medicine. Or if they are involved with medicine, they're not practicing physicians. So I think it's important to really have our voices be heard and let the public know that this is what's going on behind the scenes. And as social media evolved, I thought that it was a wonderful way for physicians without any necessarily media training, because I certainly didn't have any media training, to really get online, share their stories, share their voice, and be heard. And I've had countless examples of physicians who have made that difference, whether it's connecting with mainstream media, getting 
newspaper gigs, appearing on television, going into politics, and they've started on social media. They've started by contributing an article on Kevin MD and making that jump from social media to mainstream media so they can make their voices heard, so they can move that needle and hopefully improve the lives of clinicians and patients. And seeing that evolution over almost 20 years now has been fascinating and playing a little bit of a role in getting physicians and voices across the healthcare spectrum to be heard and improve patient care and improve the lives of clinicians today has been gratifying. Is there anything about the way this whole venture has evolved and how your career has changed due to your social media presence is unexpected? I don't think that I expected it to be such a big part of what I do professionally. When you go to medical school and residency, you're only trained to do one thing. And even now, physicians are trained to do one thing. And that's, of course, see patients, do procedures, be in the operating room, go to the hospital. And one of the things I learned is that physicians are so much more than their degrees. And that's especially true in our world, like in the podcasting world. And I'm sure that you've met so many physicians who've done things outside the exam room. And it's just opened my eyes that we can be so much more than our degrees. I've met physicians who've done coaching. They do so much non-clinical work. They do a hybrid like me where they do part-time clinical and they start businesses. They go into real estate investment, you just name it. Having that physician degree opens up so many doors outside of the exam room and outside of the hospital that I truly didn't expect. And even for me speaking personally, just talking to you and talking to physicians across the country on my show and reading their stories on Kevin MD, it's opened up so many doors for me as well. Speaking and you know having a speaking bureau and having all these roles outside of the exam room certainly has been unexpected. Uh, rewarding, certainly, but definitely unexpected. Absolutely. It is amazing how once you step into the social media world, you do begin to meet people who have similar interests and who are doing things that you've never thought of. And it does really expand your view of what physicians can do. And also just even hearing about working part-time and making that choice mm-hmm. You bring up a great point, which is that it doesn't have to be all or nothing. There's a lot in between working full time and working overtime and doing nothing but working. There are ways to balance that so that you do have time to develop interests, even if you haven't figured out what those interests are yet, to develop interests outside of medicine. I completely agree with what you said. And there are so many times where I'm just approached out of the blue by a physician who may have listened to a show of mine or read a blog post or go on these physician-only Facebook groups. And they tell me, Kevin, I didn't realize I can do that. And I think that pushing those boundaries of what defines a physician, I think that that has been the biggest evolution over the years. Because at our current trajectory, You know, we talk about the great resignation, right? We talked about so many people in healthcare leaving the field, and medicine is certainly no example. I've known and heard of countless of physicians who are resigning, they're retiring in their 40s, just doing other things because the work situation that a lot of physicians are in is simply untenable going forward. So redefining the role of what physicians traditionally are, and like we said before, It's not necessarily full-time in the clinic or the hospital, but doing things part-time and using that other time to re-nourish their soul so they can continue doing what they're doing in clinical medicine, I think that has to go forward in terms of what we need to define a future physician to be. Yeah, absolutely. One thing that I hear our coaches at Doc Working talk about a lot is agency and the concept of recognizing what we can control and what we can't control. And first of all, once you recognize that, being able to focus your energy on the things that you can control rather than letting your stress build around things that are outside of your control. And I think that's such a helpful concept because you can apply it initially to help alleviate stress and anxiety and focus on what you can control. But once you begin to do that, You also begin to explore ways that you may be able to influence things that you thought were outside of your control. And that's really one of my hopes with Doc Working is that by providing tools to physicians to prevent burnout and put them in the driver's seat of their own lives, that then they can turn around and say, I can affect change within the healthcare system 
because the system itself is in deep need of serious change. And as physicians, once we feel like we have some agency in our own lives, Mm -hmm. we can then turn around and apply that, you know, back at the table to make changes within our own organizations and then hopefully affect the larger healthcare system in that way. I'm curious too, with being in social media as you are, I think a lot of physicians are hesitant about stepping into that because of the idea of vulnerability and exposing themselves. I think we're trained to avoid being vulnerable, avoid admitting vulnerability. And so I'm wondering how you have felt that as you are referred to often as social media's leading physician voice. So in that role, how have you found the line between making yourself vulnerable, but also protecting yourself? I think that when you share stories and opinions, you know, there's always going to be people who may attack you. You open yourself up to opposing views. And I think that there's always a chance that that vulnerability can backfire. But that being said, I think that it's really important for physicians to indeed show that vulnerability because that stereotypical perspective of a physician being impervious to vulnerability, not to show weakness, never let them show that you're sweating. You know, I think that's kind of an antiquated notion. And I think that one of the things that I try to expound on is that physicians are humans, like we're human too. Just because, you know, we do these amazing procedures and see patients in the exam room and, you know, we work 80 to 100 hours per week, that doesn't mean we're any less human than anyone else. We all have families. We all have a lot of the issues that we see our own patients for. So I think that it's tremendously important to show that vulnerability and you get a lot of responses. I have a lot of articles on my site where physicians pour their heart out and in the comments, they say that, you know, this is happening to me too. And it's important to have that collective where physicians show that, hey, we're human, this is happening to me, and we're not suffering through this alone. And having a platform, whether it's Kevin MD or there are plenty of private physician Facebook groups where there are physicians only that I read every day, and there are a lot of heartbreaking stories that physicians share on that, tremendous vulnerability shown there. And in the comments, it's so important to have that support from other healthcare professionals who may be going through the same thing. And I think that's important when physicians share those stories and they realize that they're not alone in going through these struggles. Yeah, I completely agree. From talking with physicians all over the country, I was surprised when I began that conversation to realize that a lot of the things I felt isolated about were the same pain points that other physicians were experiencing. And it's easy to stay alone and feel like you have to solve these problems yourself and think that you are the only one having the problems when in in reality, we are collectively sharing a lot of the same pain points. And so having that sense of community which is something that we've created at Doc Working Thrive. And I know you have with a Facebook group on your platform. I think having a place where you can go, where you are part of a community and you can share some vulnerability in a safe place Mm -hmm. is invaluable really in terms of helping to prevent burnout. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And when it comes to social media, I talk to a lot of doctors who are hesitant to go on because of all the toxicity that we hear, especially on Twitter. You have a lot of political toxicity, and I certainly understand that. So whenever I talk to clinicians, you know, I don't tell them, you know, you have to go online. You certainly do what you're comfortable with. You know, you always have to ask yourself, you know, what are your goals for social media? Is it really to share these stories of vulnerability? Is it to advocate for patients? Is it to make a change? You know, go into politics. There's so many different goals that you could use social media for. So when I talk to physicians or for these clinicians listening to this podcast, always ask yourself, why do I want to go into social media? And then you could find the platforms that fit those goals. And you hear a lot of downsides about social media, and a lot of them are true, but I do think that there continue to be a lot of upsides when it comes to social media and physicians adopting it. I would love to hear a little bit about the book that you've co-authored, giving advice about social media. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. So it's establishing, managing, and protecting your online reputation. So it is a little bit dated. It was published many years ago. You know, every year in social media is like a decade in real life in terms of the evolution, but the concepts remain the same. And 
It's a book where I try to demystify why physicians should use social media because even now, like I wrote that book like what, seven, eight years ago. Uh, back then, people were wondering, well, why should I use social media? And people ask me now, they have that same question. So really it goes into three points. Number one, we need to certainly educate patients because when patients go online, searching for healthcare information is one of the most popular reasons why they go online. And that's especially been more important during the pandemic. And we hear nothing but misinformation about the COVID vaccine and COVID itself. And it's been so politicized. So I do think it's so important for physicians to use online media to really spread reputable health information. The second reason, of course, is the online reputation piece because patients are Googling their physicians. So it's important for physicians to take control of their online presence. And then the third part is what we talked about in terms of sharing our stories, whether to be vulnerable and get support from people who are commiserating with us or sharing stories to advocate for change in healthcare. So I try to propose a case in this book in terms of a little bit more of a positive perspective of why physicians should adopt social media, because there is a lot of negativity out there. But I do think that those social media tools continue to be tremendously powerful for healthcare professionals. What's next on the horizon for you, Kevin, and for Kevin MD? Well, I think I'm going to continue on this trajectory. I think COVID has brought a lot of things in light. I think that one of the things that we realized is COVID had made a lot of physicians realize that their jobs aren't as secure as they once were. You hear a lot of emergency room physicians after they risked their lives treating people in the early stages of COVID. Now they're getting laid off after their group has been bought by private equity groups. I myself as a primary care physician, I was put on furlough for months after you know the first few months of COVID. And we need to realize that being a physician isn't as secure as we thought it was. So it's important to, once again, be more than our degrees and find avenues outside of clinical medicine, not only to help us with burnout, but really to make us rely less on seeing patients. Because a lot of the things that are controlling medicine, like you said, it's out of our control. So we need to be empowered and take that control back give us back that agency so we can use those degrees to thrive going forward and place more things that are under our control. So that's what I'm going to continue to do is share these stories. And like you, we have a podcast where Kevin MD authors can share their stories in their own words. And I'm going to continue talking to doctors across the country. It's a daily podcast. We're almost up to 700 episodes. And it's just really talking to physicians. And my job is very easy. I sit back and just learn from them. But hearing their stories and what they say in their own words has been tremendously gratifying to see. Absolutely. Well, thank you for everything that you're doing for all of us in the healthcare sector. It's great to be able to see all of the resources that are available at kevinmd.com and to listen to your podcast. So thank you so much for coming on to Doc Working, the whole physician podcast and for this conversation. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here with us and listening to this conversation today with Dr. Kevin Poe of KevinMD.com. If you are identifying with any of the things that we talked about, if you are interested in community and coaching to live your best life, please check us out at DocWorking.com. Please check out our programs in DocWorking Thrive. And we hope to see you on the platform with our coaches and with your peer community. Thanks again for listening. And we'll see you next time on Doc Working, the Whole Physician Podcast. I'm Amanda Taran, producer of Doc Working, the Whole Physician Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and head over to DocWorking.com to see all we have to offer.